in October of 1998, the first of the Halloween documents were released. This showed the world how much Microsoft was afraid of and how much they hated Linux. Years later, in 2014, following the departure of Steve Barmore from Microsoft and replacement by Satya Nadella, he stood in front of a slide saying, Microsoft loves Linux in this now famous photo. Microsoft nowadays is a very, very different company than they once were in the 90s and early 2000s. That's not to say they're not evil. They are still very much evil. They are just evil in different ways and data collection ways and things like that. And just recently at Build 2023, Microsoft announced something and made it generally available. Azure Linux, a Microsoft Linux distribution. Now, this is not a Linux distro that you're going to be downloading and running on your personal system. It's not trying to compete with like, you know, Ubuntu and things like that. What it is, it has a very, very specific purpose. It is offered as a host OS for the Azure Kubernetes service. So if you're involved in like the web hosting sort of space and you make use of Azure, this is now an option available to use. Unless you are heavily involved in this space, this is not something you're ever going to interact with directly. You're probably going to use a service that is using it on the back end, but you have no idea what the services you're using currently are using, so it doesn't really affect you in that sort of way. But this is something they've been using internally for quite a while now. The only difference here is they are now making it available to the public. And I would expect that they would make it available for other services they offer as well. Now, to be fair, this is not something truly new from Microsoft. For quite a while now, they have had their own Linux distribution, which they used initially internally before eventually making it available to the general public. That being CBL Marina, which the CBL stands for Common Base Linux. This is an internal Linux distribution for Microsoft's cloud infrastructure and edge products and services. That is a lot of ands in that sentence. CBL Marina is designed to provide consistent platform for these devices and services and will enhance Microsoft's ability to stay current on Linux updates. So, put in the most pessimistic way possible, this is Microsoft suffering from not made here syndrome. Sure, there's all these distros out there which do every single thing that we need them to do, and we just need to modify them just a tiny little bit, but we didn't make it, so it's bad, let's go make our own thing instead. Which is one way to look at it. The marketing spin is they don't want to be reliant on a project where they don't control how the changes happen. Because sure, they could do everything with Fedora, with RHEL, with Ubuntu, whatever you would want them to use. But if that distro decides, oh, we're going to change a package name, we're going to remove a package, we're going to have this version instead of that version. This could introduce breaking changes in Microsoft systems. And they just don't want to deal with that. They want to know exactly what they have on their system to know exactly what they can build around. And if they need to change something, they are completely in control of those changes. Why am I talking about CBL Marina? I thought this was a video about Azure Linux. Well, it's because Azure Linux is a modified version of CBL Marina. And as stated by Jim Perrins, the Microsoft Azure Linux Principal Program Manager, the reason it exists is because it allows us to have a very defined, very opinionated Azure focus and to tune the components of the distribution to be exactly what we need to support a container host and try to keep the dependencies, extraneously packages, things like that, to a minimum. CBL Marina supports both a package-based update model like you would see on most regular distros like Ubuntu, like Arch, like Gentoo, and pretty much anything else out there, and also supports an image-based update model. So it is also a immutable distribution or an image distribution or whatever term you want to be using, like Silverblue, like Vanilla OS, like Blend OS, and a bunch of other distros out there. And it does this leveraging the RPM Package Manager and OS Tree. But even though it's using this tech, 
it is not directly a fork of Fedora Silverblue or directly a fork of regular Fedora or of RHEL or really any other distro. It is its own standalone thing that is using the RPM packaging system. And there's a very good reason why they did this. Once again, from Jim Perrins at Build 2023, Microsoft has kind of a history with Linux. Certainly one way to put it. I think the Bulma quote is from 2001, but a lot of the sentiment still lingers even today. Part of the reason we did not choose to start with a distribution and then fork it for our needs is we didn't want to be seen as doing the embrace and extend thing again. We didn't want to wake any of that up. We figured, build it from scratch, we can tailor it to our needs, we're scratching a niche we had and offering the solution back to the community. The core distro is fairly light, you know, as a server distro should be, weighing in at 400 megabytes with 300 packages. Is that the smallest thing ever? Absolutely not. Does it do the job they need it to do? Yes. Is that fine? Probably. If you're looking for something really, really light that has basically no functionality, I'm sure you can build something even lighter if you're really trying. But in a separate blog post, Jim Perrin says this, our goal is to provide a secure and reliable platform to run your workload, and making it small and not having extra packages you don't need is part of that goal. Towards this end, all updates to the Azure Linux container host are first run through a rigorous suite of Azure validation tests. It doesn't matter if they're Azure validation tests, if they're rigorous, that's great. This is just extra fluff. This suite of tests is kept constantly updated as support for new scenarios is added. Additionally, since there are far fewer packages in the container host, the volume of required security patching is lower. If there are less packages, there are less things that need to be patched. And these issues are patched promptly as well. We closely monitor and fully curate the software supply chain, which enables a greater assurance of quality and reliance end to end. So the TLDR of all of this is Azure Linux is the commercially supported and commercially updated version of Azure Linux. Now, I know it's fun to jump on Microsoft for any little movement around Linux. They've been using Linux internally for a very long time now. Uh, making that jump now is a little bit late. But in many cases, I can see why they deserve it, especially when they're doing some weird posturing around Windows as well. But in this case, I don't really see anything wrong with what they were doing. They're just making the thing they were already using available to the public. It would be nice to see them use a distro that's, you know, already being supported and then dump a ton of money into it and, you know, give that project even more money to work with. But, you know, that was probably never even on the table. Maybe it was, but I really doubt it. When Microsoft starts to, like, you know, try to compete with RHEL using Linux, then I think it's about time to start getting worried. Right now, though, they're just offering an extra thing that maybe someone's going to use, but if their workflow is already built around using RHEL or using Ubuntu or something else, I don't see any reason why they would go and switch just because Microsoft is the company backing it. Would you go and use Azure Linux if you're using their Kubernetes service? If Azure Linux was something available as a desktop distro, would you go and use it? Would you trust Microsoft to make a Linux distribution? I would love to know. Let me know your thoughts down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of... Not... <laughs> These amazing people over here. Press the right button. Uh, Patreon, subscribe, Stelly Bear Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and Microsoft bad.